Without John Zazula, or better known as Johnny Z, there would be no heavy metal or thrash metal the way that we know it today. While Metallica was making waves with No Life to Leather as their demo tape, Johnny Z got a hold of it, took them to the East Coast, couldn't get them a record deal secured, I believe with Metal Blade Records at the time, but then took his own money, put it up, started Megaforce Records, put Kill 'Em All Out, put Metallica on tour with Raven, the Kill 'Em All for One tour, and then basically continued to be the godfather for the band. In addition to Metallica, Johnny Z was responsible for bringing many of our heavy metal favorites to light, including Overkill and Anthrax. Johnny Z was a fixture on the East Coast metal scene back in the flea market days and to the point of starting his record store, Rock and Roll Heaven in New Jersey. Had the pleasure of meeting Johnny Z a couple of times. Always an extremely friendly person, including to a very young and impressionable Kyle. And uh, I asked him probably the stupidest questions in the world. When the world is forming around bands like Metallica and Venom and other assorted heavy bands that mainstream public just didn't get at that point. But importantly, Johnny Z got it. And he put his money where his mouth is. And I gotta be honest, I didn't think about Johnny Z for a long time, uh, you know, over the last few years. And then uh, I wanna say I saw an Instagram post or a post from Charlie from Anthrax going back a couple of years ago saying that when he was in town, I think for uh, Rockville, he had stopped off at Johnny's house. Johnny had moved to Florida with his wife, Marsha, who was equally involved in the metal scene. Um, and uh, Marsha passed away in 2021. Johnny uh, passed away last year. They were both living in Claremont, Florida. Today is a very special show in Florida, not near Claremont or not near New Jersey or New York where a lot of the, the work for Johnny took place, but um, ironically in South Florida, in Fort Lauderdale at the Hard Rock Casino, Seminole Casino and Hard Rock Live, whatever it's, it's called these days. Um, and we were lucky enough to get tickets. We're gonna be headed over there. We're gonna take you with us. We've made it to the casino, hours ahead of time. We've made it in, let's go take a look around. Hours before the show, there's a bunch of people all milling around out here already. Metallica in the house. General admissions, starting to line up for the show, almost 4.30. And so the crowd has gathered two hours before the show, one hour before door. So this is just the general mission line. Let's take a look. What the fuck is happening with these guys? Like Santa Claus? Nicola! 541, the line is going in. My goodness, I think everybody's getting in there now. 554. Straight to the merch. Let's do it! Oh my goodness. This is a madhouse over here. To quote Anthrax, surprisingly, Black and Whiskey is here. Oh, look at this. Black and Motorcycle. Look at that. Amazing. Well, this is the view from the not so cheap seats tonight. All right, a little bit more context about this show. The show is very special for the fact that not only is the money going towards charities uh, associated with Johnny and Marcia Zazula, the tour that happened back in 1983 was Raven headlining with Metallica being taken out. This is a one-off show that's only happening in South Florida, again, with charities going towards Johnny and Marcia Zazula, as well as the regular Metallica charities. And the songs that will be played by Metallica are only from the first two records that's so taking place between <coughs> Kill 'em All, Coughing Behind Us, and 84. COVID 'em All, <laughs> Kill 'em All, and Ride the Lightning. So uh, it's really interesting, and we'll see what kind of a treat we're in for. So while this is the view from our cheap seats tonight, which were not so cheap, $300 face value, this is what the venue looks like in here. 7,000 people. It's a little bit smaller than the stadium series that they've been doing, but we've seen them in clubs. We've seen them in arenas. And now we're back to um, a reasonable size. Yeah, mid-size venue. <laughs> Casino? Yeah. 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 
And so we begin. Yeah, new guy. New guy, never had the microphone. The microphones work. Welcome everybody! to help and celebrate, you know, heavy music and the, uh, and the life That's of the right. Zazula family. That's right. who made Woo! They dedicated their lives to something exactly like this. That's right. Live music, bringing music to the people. And uh, so we're super grateful to be hosting this thing and getting you all together to join in with us. So thanks for coming and celebrating. It's awesome to see so many familiar faces down here. That's right. Once again, back in Fort Lauderdale. It's only been a year. And so like James is saying, we're here celebrating all things Johnny and Marcia Sazula. And John and Marcia Suzula are the reason Metallica exists today. And the reason that Metallica is still going 40 years strong and that this music is still connecting with all of you people out there. So we've got a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be grateful for. And James and I would love to take this chance to just introduce the first guys on stage tonight. Back in about 1928, maybe 1929, when we went on our very first U.S. tour on the back of the Kill em All album that came out that summer. I've heard of that one. The Kill em All album. Okay, so it was 1983, as most of you guys know. We went out and celebrated crazy thrash metal music all across America. We played 30, 40 dates that summer, and our touring mates we're the guys that are going to come out now and and celebrate and, and begin the evening. So, will you please give a big Metal Militia welcome to our friends John, Mark, and Mike in Raven. Come on out, fellas. Honey, honey, 12 times in a row. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in uh, an hour and a half or something. Enjoy. John and Marcia, we would have never come to the Americas. And Metallica would still be sitting in Los Angeles. Who knows? But what we do know is that he had a vision. 
and Marsha pulled them a little bit down to reality. But they still had a vision and they made music change forever. tonight and talk for a few minutes and give you some stories and some backstories about the significance of this night because I know you're all here to hear the kick-ass music of Metallica. We're all here for that but there's a reason to this night which of course you saw in the advertising and uh, that is to pay tribute to John and Marcia Zazula, the founders of Megaforce Records. label to ever release Metallica records. Megaforce released Kill Em All and of course Ride the Lightning. And a label that went on to bring us so much great metal and so many great bands from Overkill to Anthrax to Raven to Testament. I saw Chuck Billy out there in the house earlier. And uh, the guys wanted me to just come out and tell you a little bit about the history of Megaforce and about John and Marsha, who I knew and loved very much, and very sadly, we lost both of them in the last two years. But uh, the thing that comes to mind when I think of Johnny and Marsha is passion. They were so passionate about the bands that they worked with. They would fight and do anything for the bands. They would not give up until that band got something happening. And I knew that better than anybody because I started in radio in 1983. And in 1983, of course, Metallica released Kill Em All. And I knew John and Marsha because they had a flea market. They initially started out selling records at a flea market. And I would go there and I'd get all the cool records. I'd get my old Kerrang! magazine. There's some people here that had to get Kerrang! back in the day, right? And all the cool British imports. And Johnny was like the oracle. You'd go see Johnny, and he'd sit behind the counter, he'd tell you, hey, you gotta check out this band, you gotta check out that band. And suddenly, when I got a radio show playing metal in 83, I started playing some of these records that Johnny would sell me. So to show you the passion of Johnny Z, my first year in radio, I'm on the air, and I get a knock on the door late at night. And I pull the curtain, and who's there but Johnny Z in the rain at 11 o'clock at night at my studio in New Jersey. And I said to him, Johnny, what are you doing here? He goes, you gotta let me in. I was live on the radio. And uh, Johnny comes in, and I said, what's up? And he said to me, Ed, he goes, I got this band. I, I leveraged everything on this band to make it. And I put my life on the line for this band, and I need this band to be played on the radio. And I said, well, listen, man. Just leave the record, 
I'll have a listen to it, and if it's good, I'll play it on next week's show. He goes, no, I'm not leaving till you play this record. <laughs> so, I'm like, I gotta get this guy out of the studio. I'm 18, I'm nervous, I'm like, what's going on? This guy's giving me a hard time. So I said, John, what's the record? And he takes the record out of the bag, and this is the exact record, because I kept it, and here's a photo of that record that'll come up on the screen here in a second. So I played Jump in the Fire that night, and I'm proud to say I was one of the first people to play Metallica on the radio. And Johnny wrote, as you can see on the record, 2N for Breaking Metal on the Airwaves, Johnny Z. So I still have that record to this day, it means a lot to me. And uh, I played the record, and I gotta be honest with you, I didn't know what I heard, you know. In 83, hearing that, I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and uh, as he left and wrote that on the record, he came up to me and he said, if I could ever get this band to happen and to make it, I'm gonna hire you to work for my record company. And I looked and I'm like, yeah, like that band's ever gonna make it? <laughs> like anyone's gonna play Metallica on the radio? No way, I'm never getting that job. Well, a couple of years later, I start seeing Metallica on the Jersey clubs. I start seeing them opening for bands and clubs. Then I see them start headlining clubs and get bigger and bigger. And the next thing you know, Johnny calls me up and he says, Ed, I got good news for you. He said, obviously Metallica's well on their way. He goes, and I'm gonna offer you a job. And uh, he was to his word, and I began four years of amazing experiences with John and Marsha. Initially, my office was in his living room, sitting next to his daughter's crib. And we just built the company from there, went to England for the first time with him. They were wonderful people, passionate people, and as you can see from that story, they cared so much about their bands, and they would never give up. And Metallica was the first through the gate and uh, John and Marsha mean so much to me and obviously so much to Metallica and so much to so many of the people in this room, including, including all of us fans, but including some of my co-workers and people, other artists that were on Megaforce that are here in the building tonight. So I want to give a big sincere thanks to the Metallica guys. Metallica, let me tell you guys, as you know, but I've got the pleasure of knowing them for a very long time. So much respect because they never fucking forget where they came from, and that is amazing. So I know you want to get some music going on this stage, but you're seeing a very special show tonight, folks. Where are the old school Metallica fans? Let me tell you something. Your mind is going to be blown because this night is all about the first two records. And it's all about paying tribute to John and Marcia Z on Megaforce Records. So with that in mind, I direct your attention to the screens because here is Metallica themselves talking about the importance of Johnny and Marcia. Have a look. It was the spring of 1980. And um, we had just moved up to San Francisco. We got a call and an invitation from a very enthusiastic Jonathan Zuber, who was in New Jersey. I remember going out uh, at the El Cerrito house, the Metallica Mansion, going uh, to the phone booth at the Lars, and him huh? talking to Johnny over the phone. And, um, you know, it's like, yeah, I was just connected with this guy who got the tape. And, um, you know, back then, tape trading wasn't the thing. That's how you got your music around. Just remember talking on the phone with him and, and Lars just saying, hey, you know, this guy in New Jersey really likes us and he wants to, like, he, he's passionate about us and it feels great, it feels right. We were ready for whatever at that time, threw all our shit in a U-Haul truck, spent about a week going across the country and uh, ended up in Old Bridge, New Jersey. We had never had it. Had seen it. Nothing. And we hop in this U-Haul and go out. And I remember when we pulled up to his house, eventually, one of the first things we had to tell him was, 
hey, we're here, and now we're getting rid of our lead guitar player. You know? <laughs> He's like, okay, you know, well, let's, let's keep going. We share the same vision. So uh, it, it felt absolutely right. Well, when I first arrived, I was a music director, and meeting this guy, that was the guys in the band, and he started the first year, that's why. And he was like, hey, you know, he's dancing, and saying, yeah, Johnny, he's the guy who, who started the uh, record label, and he was signing this, and he was like, and so, we're going to go out to a store for the first time out in New Jersey, and rock my head, and so we all piled in the car, and then the very first picture I took with the band, was out that day out in the parking lot, after seeing uh, 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 Johnny and Marsha rock my head, and um, at some point, it would just become so intolerable to stay with the music that did it. There was no hot water, no heat, it was winter time, it was snow, it was horrible. So, we all moved into Johnny's house, into the basement, and uh, that was something. <laughs> I mean, we were, it felt like we were in a house, even though it was just a basement, you know, and four cots who lined up in the basement. It was, it was great. We basically, you know, we'd sleep down in the basement, we would eat meals with them, the family, uh, the kids, and, and there was definitely a, a very communal energy about all of it. Johnny and, and Marsha obviously were the sort of the parents to not just their own kids, but to all of us. And um, they were very patient and gracious uh, to uh, let us sleep and, and kind of uh, sort of inhabit their whole world. What set uh, the Zuzulas apart was that they were extremely passionate. You know, they were none of them. They loved none of them. They worked with you know, Anvil, they'd done a few things with them, Raven. Yeah, they had other bands who were working with, but we felt we were cared for by them. They were representing the town as well. We miss you, we love you, you'll always be father and highly daughter, and you'll never be in respect. Johnny Marks will always hold a special place in my heart as we will rest on the family and all the incredible cast characters that we met uh, through them. The Zazula family definitely made some sacrifices. Uh, extremely grateful, I mean, words, words can't say how uh, happy and grateful I am for them taking in this unruly, wild bunch of metalheads. Um, and you know, Johnny and Marshall were that too, but they had a family, and they, they were trying to raise a family, and him taking a chance on us, uh, in investing his time, his money, his effort into this. So, yeah, I would like them to know that we are so grateful, because without that step in our careers, we wouldn't be where we are today. So. I would like you to give a round of applause, please, for the daughters of John and Marcia Z. Claire, Danielle. And she was the one whose print was in my office. Ricky Lee's is over. Ricky, take it away. Hello, Hard Rock! I just want to take a moment to thank everyone for being here tonight. We are deeply grateful and incredibly humbled that you guys chose to come and bang your heads tonight. We know mom and dad would be right there banging their heads with you. See, we had a policy. We'll play music in our store that we've taken home to prove. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to do was put on a metal album that sucked. Or play a, one of millions of cassettes that suck. And we had a very select group of CDs, or truly cassettes that we would sell. And the store had people in it. And I wasn't going to play a tape from a band that I never heard of. What if it sucked? But the guy says, Johnny, Marshall, you gotta hear this. You're going to fucking feel bad. And uh, I, I guess Marvin was okay. You know, and we put it in, and it was, uh, I don't know what it was, but 
when we heard the mechanics, the sort of mechanics, it was all over for me. I mean, I was gaga. I thought this was the answer to every problem America was having with music. You know, there was no here. There was no Iron Maiden here. There was none of that stuff here. And Metallica, these guys, man, sounded just, it was a sound of their own. Yeah. We had never heard it on any, anything else we'd heard. It was perfect. back then, but this music keeps us, keeps us young, man. I love it. Okay. All right, more old stuff. Kill them all. Heard of it? Yes. Is everyone ready? I know you're ready. Roberto! 
Yeah, you're ready. <clears throat> How about some more old stuff? Yeah. Alright, this, uh, the title of this song came from a band that I was in before Metallica. <laughs> practicing for 41 years. We're getting there. What song is it? Or Am I
them out. Oh boy. amounts of picks and sticks being thrown out. because we certainly did. We are Metallica, and so are you. Incredible fucking night. Incredible fucking night! Thank you so much, and thank you, Johnny Z, Marcia Z. May you rest in peace eternally. Thank you, everyone. Fuck you! Yeah! Thank <laughs> you.
Post show, most of the merch is sold out. The other merch stand is even more barren. All right, well, we're back from the show. It's actually the following morning. I've got one of my Metallica t-shirts, $40 t-shirts um, on my body already. It was one of the greatest shows that I think I've ever seen. And I've seen Metallica upwards of uh, 100 plus times over their uh, career. Small clubs, stadiums, theaters, um, and this was just awesome. Um, it was great the way that they integrated uh, video from John and Marsha throughout the show. Eddie Trunk did a phenomenal job kind of teeing things off and giving some background uh, about John and Marsha's importance. And then the set selection was just um, top notch. I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again. The band seemed like they had more fun than I've ever seen them have um, on stage. And uh, it was it was truly remarkable. This is the first time I think we've been to a show in years that we just sat around for hours afterwards and talked about all of the details about it. So um, I'm gonna get out of here for now. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Treat others the way you wanna be treated. Have a great night. See you guys.